Hello, Namaste, Salam Walekum, Sasrikal. Welcome back to another session with your war chef at whatever.com. You know, a lot of times we wonder that when we go and eat these puffs, these puffs are light and fluffy and you always wonder how this puff pastry dough is made. When I was in college, puff pastry is one of the basic thing that we learn in the first year of college. Why I am saying that is for you to understand that puff pastry is not difficult. So today I am going to show you how to make this puff pastry. To make this puff pastry, I am going to use half a slab of butter, which is around 220 grams. So what we are going to do is, we are going to take around 20% of uh, this butter, that is around uh, 40 grams. And uh, we are going to melt this butter, because we are going to add this butter in the dough we are going to make. Around 220 grams of flour. Add pinch of salt. You can add little bit of lime juice or vinegar. This is used to strengthen the gluten that is there in the flour. Just a few drops of vinegar. Okay, add this butter. Add water. Usually it takes around 55% of the flour. So around 100 ml of water in this. And make a soft dough. So we are just going to knead this dough a little bit. Okay. You see when we knead the dough, we are going to form the gluten. Now, you know, the rest of the butter, I put it here. Now, the important part is how you are going to handle this dough. At any point of the time, you are not going to handle the dough with your whole hands, only with the fingertips, because our hands are also warm, and you don't want this warm temperature to get into the dough. So, we are always going to touch anything only with the fingertips. That way, you are transferring as little heat as possible into the dough. Okay. Take the ding chick, ding chick and just crush it little bit. I am going to add little bit of flour just so that it is easy to handle. Just we are going to make this into a nice uh, square shape. Just to make it into a square shape like this and uh, keep it ready because this is what is going to go into the dough. The dough is also slightly cold. One more trick I always do is here is my tray on which I am going to roll this dough so that all the things remain cold and I am going to roll on this and whenever I transfer the sheet into the fridge in between I am going to put on, on this sheet and put this directly in the fridge add little bit flour what we need to do is we need to just spread it on only four sides here I am using a very cold uh, uh, tray on which this sheet is rolled so this remains soft and now you know, put this butter in the center. All you do is wrap it up, okay? Just, okay? Okay? On all the sides. Okay? Okay, now we are just going to spread it slowly. Because if you do it fast, the butter is going to, uh, you know, pop out. You just very carefully, you are going to roll this. Okay. Just sprinkle a little bit flour. Do not add too much flour. Now you see how I spread it into a thin sheet. Now what we are going to do, we are going to fold it into three. Just fold it once, fold it twice and then put it on this. Now we are going to put this back in the fridge so that it cools down for 10 minutes. Okay, And then I am going to pull it back and going to roll it again. So friends, now let us understand what I am trying to do here. Okay. I have got the sheet of dough. What I did is, I put butter and again covered it. Okay. Now I folded it and make it into thin layers. So now what happened? This butter is in the center of each sheet. As we spread it, this is going to become multiple number of times and at a point that will be few thousand layers. So we do not want this butter to pop out of these thin sheets and come out. For that reason, we need to maintain the butter at a very cold temperature because the butter what we are using has a lot of moisture and you don't want this flour layer to absorb the moisture from the butter. So you will never give an opportunity for the butter to melt. That is the reason why you need to keep this really cold. When we fold it and roll it a couple of times, usually we do around six times, by the time there will be thousands of layers, but the butter will be a thin layer in each sheet. There is another way we do the same puff pastry in India. 
what they do in india in small bakeries they do not use butter they use margarine that is dalda they make the dalda into a nice thin paste and then they roll the thin sheet of uh, dough they apply little bit of margarine fold it again roll it thin again apply little bit of margarine again roll it thin and that is actually even more difficult this is very simple try it but remember the butter should never melt in the entire process and you want this butter to be in thin layers between many layers of the sheets okay now look at this this is perfect okay just sprinkle little bit of flour and then roll it now the dough is ready we are going to fold it one more time and quickly rush it into the fridge and rest it another 10 minutes now i am back with this sheet and add little bit of flour so just one more time spread it very evenly beautiful isn't it so now roll it one more time back like this okay this is the third time and we're going to put this back in the fridge i'm doing it one more time this is like fourth time okay now fourth time so turn it fold it one more time okay and take it back into the cooler so dear friends what do you think making this puff pastry it is not the skill that you need you need the patience because we're going to fold it six times and between each fold we're going to put this dough inside for around 10 minutes so that the temperature of the butter is very cold and it never melts so the entire process of rolling this and making this puff pastry takes around one and a half hour because we are making in a small quantity but when we make a larger quantity in a five star hotel it usually take four to six hours to finish this puff pastry now i have done this uh, five times this is the sixth time and the final time so i'm going to roll it into a thin sheet so now you can see that this dough is very evenly you have to roll it even thickness and this is ready and now we can convert this into egg puffs or whatever you want and also if you see that i am able to retain a nice shape square shape now you can cut into any shape you want you know i'm just going to cut uh in the center like this you know after your final roll make sure that the dough is very cold because of all this lights it's got a uh, little bit warmed up so i put in the fridge and after you put the stuffings whether you're making egg or vegetable puffs whatever after you put the stuffing seal it put it in the fridge for another 5 10 minutes and then put in a hot oven around 450 degrees hot oven for 10 minutes and all of them will puff up instead of making vegetable puff and egg puff i'm going to make a puff by putting you know my sweet mangoes and in fact dry fruits you can make with any kind of stuffing i'll just put some dry fruits just apply little bit on the water on the edges and then seal it a simple puff is ready i'm going to put some mangoes fruit mangoes also seal them little bit so i'm going to bake this in the oven at 400 degrees fahrenheit for around uh, 10 minutes okay i'm going to put rest of this dough in a ziploc bag and put it in the freezer and i'm going to use it later so now look at this you know how fluffy this has become see you can see hundreds of layers like this okay this is what you know when you bake it right when you make this dough right you going to make the puff paste which literally melts in your mouth wow look at this inside how beautifully you can put uh, dry fruits nuts or anything and you can make your own puffs wow so dear friends i hope you have enjoyed to learn how to make puff pastry once you learn the art of making puff pastry you can make any kinds of vegetable puffs and it will be a great snack for your party but if you want to go a easy route there are various kinds of puff pastry that is available in the market and we will learn how to make vegetable puff egg puffs and many other kind of puffs in the future session so dear friends do not forget whatever is all about inspiring others to cook so please post your recipes and cooking tips so others can benefit from your great cooking thank you